As prices rallying up, what are they doing with their short positions? 16,000, 18,000, 19,000, 19.7 thousand. They are increasing their short positions as the headlines are telling you that they're snapping through the downward bearishness. How's it going fellow traders and welcome back for another look at the latest CFTC data uh, showing us the positions of the banks, big institutions, the big massive firms that are controlling the markets. As of May 24th, 2022, here's a brief snapshot of the positions held by them as of that date. And so let's start like we always do by examining gold. What do we see when we take a look? So we can see when we look at long positions that they really haven't made any uh, adjustment, okay? We've seen that they've been profit taking on long positions and we've been pointing this out for quite some time. We spotted it and told you that it was gonna happen before it even took place. And now we see a decline, 288, 283, and just recently 283 to 282 is not such a big deal. What is a bigger move is over the last few weeks, we can see that they increased their shorts from 107 and then down to 98, okay? So they increased shorts and then down to 98. Why do they increase shorts? Well, remember where this was taking place, May 10th, all right? This data here is this rally up. So before it was a big increase in short positions, right down here. Now. As they were pushing price to the downside, the institutions, okay, with their big increase in short positions, that caused a lot of traders to get out of their long positions, okay? Because remember, retail traders were getting in long here and they held as long as they possibly could. Once that big drop in price came, a lot of retail traders got out of their long positions and now are their, yeah, their long positions and then they started getting into short positions. All right. And what happens when retail traders start to get into short positions? The banks push it up. So that's what's happened over the last uh, couple of weeks is this push to the upside. Now, we were mentioning a couple of weeks back, be careful because we do suspect that there's going to be a reversal in price because of the dollar dropping from institutional uh, supply. And that is exactly what took place here. All right, so let's take a look at oil. Oil is uh, rallying slightly here, right here, but we're talking about this candle right here, this consolidation candle. And so what do we see? A preparation for a long position, 415, 416, 422. At the same time, look what's happening here. 04, 99, 87. So they're reducing their overall short exposure and increasing their overall long exposure. And what does that result to? That 81% or 83% of their overall exposure is geared to the long side. Okay, long side. And if you take a look at the net positions, you can see that they just keep on climbing 304, 316, 321, 325, and now 334,000 net positive positions. All right. So this is very bullish, but at the same time, we are stuck in a range. So remember that we are stuck in a range. So it's bullish, but only causing price to rally to the top end of the range. All right. So let's keep things into context there. US dollar. Wow. What a nice, beautiful drop we got in price. Remember a couple of weeks back? What did we say? Be careful because they're going to drop price. That's exactly what they did. Exactly. So as price started to drop, we can see that uh, long positions barely moved and they reduced some of their short positions. That's all that really took place. All right. Long exposure, 77% of their overall position is geared to the long side. And we can see net positions is positive as of this point. So what is going on here? Well, this is a reversal in price. This is a uh, drop that we were expecting. Uh, it's reacting to uh, an institutional selling area. So this uh, pullback in price 
was to be expected. The next question is, where are they going to start continuing to push price back up? Because when we do an overall analysis of the charts, it does look very evident to us that price over the longer period is going to be heading upwards. And so when we take a look at the positions held by the retail traders, um, we don't have data for the dollar, but we do have data, data for the euro US dollar. And it looks like they are more short. Okay, they, they've switched from uh, uh, being more long to, to more short, which means they are more long the dollar. Okay, they're more long the dollar. So again, retail traders never know when to get into price. Okay, they always wait until there's 100% proof that it's going up. But by that time, price is already too high. So they're going long here at these highs. That's not the time to be going long the dollar. Right when it's in entering into an institutional selling area, that's when they're going to start taking profits and then price is going to drop. So right now, retail traders are uh, mostly long. And again, they're on the wrong side of this. And so when they start to realize that, uh oh, I made a mistake, maybe I should get in short. That's when likely the banks will reverse price and send it back upwards. But we'll keep an eye on what the banks are doing and give you that information. OK, so make sure you like and subscribe. OK, subscribe is important and set that notification so that when we do post uh, future videos, you'll be there and you'll know exactly what the institutions are doing and you won't be caught on the wrong side of the trade. OK, Aussie US dollar. Take a look. Longs have been cooled off for a long time. And what do we see? A reduction in short positions, 86 to 82. Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? They are doing the exact same thing that they've been doing for quite some time. They add shorts, they take profits on those shorts. They add shorts, they take profits on those shorts. They add shorts, they take profits on those shorts. All right? Basically, the whole idea of what has been taking place all throughout here has been always a focus on short positions and short covering. And we can see those cycles appear on the chart, okay? Where over here they're adding shorts and then they're taking profit on those shorts, taking profit. And they add shorts and then they take profit on their shorts, shorts, and then they add shorts and then they start to take profit on their shorts. So the main focus has always been on shorts, adding shorts and taking profit on shorts. Now, when we look at the retail sentiment, they are starting to get more bearish. But again, where are they getting more bearish? They're getting more bearish down here at the lows. That's that. This is not where you want to get into short positions when it's already made its move. Because when this happens and price shoots to the upside, guess what, what's going to happen to those positions? They're going to go into the minus. And retail traders don't like positions going into the minus. So they will end up freaking out and then they'll close their positions. And when they do, eventually close those uh, short positions and turn them into longs, then the banks will come in and reverse price back to the downside. OK, so let's take a look at the US CAD. What do we see with the US CAD? So US CAD, um, they were uh, a little bit aggressive with their long positions. Remember that back here? Starting to become aggressive. Why? Well, because they were rallying price up. And look where it contacted. You think that is a coincidence that within a pip, our area of institutional selling is contacted and then price drops from it? Do you think that's a coincidence? It is absolutely not. This is a lot of hard work and effort uh, put into doing analysis, locating institutional supply and demand on the charts. OK, this is what we teach in our school this is what we do in our classroom sessions is talk uh, about how we locate institutional buying and selling and the importance of, of locating these areas. So here's a perfect example. We had this zone drawn for many, many months now and price comes up contacts that area of selling and then drops. OK, so that's institutional selling coming into play. And so uh, or uh, an area where they're going to take profits on long positions. OK, institutional selling areas are either areas where they're going to take profits on longs or areas where they're going to accumulate short positions. 
And so what do we see here? May 17, 50,000, and then a big drop to 41,000. That's profit taking. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. That's them making money. That's them locking in profits. Okay. Now, if we look at the retail sentiment, they're starting to get in long. Okay. Starting to get in long. But why are they getting in long now? They were mostly short. Okay. They were mostly short. And then they realize, oh, darn it, we're wrong. We shouldn't be uh, short. We should be actually uh, um, long. Okay. And so they get in long right here at the highs. Again, the exact wrong place to be getting in longs. And they're probably adding in long, adding in long as price drops. And what's going to happen is when they can't uh, take this um, drop in their account, this drawdown, they're going to eventually cover those long positions and start getting in short again. And that's when the, the banks will come in and reverse price right back to the upside. All right, so watch for that because we suspect that is on its way. U.S. Swiss franc contacted institutional selling and price dropped. Okay, just as we've been talking about how the markets move. Price is dropping right now. And uh, retail traders, again, they got in long positions up near the highs here. Okay, and you can see the difference compared from uh, previous week to this week. And you can see how retail traders are always doing the exact opposite of uh, what the institutions are doing with, with price. So retail traders go long when price is entering into an institutional selling area. And then price drops from those areas. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why it's very important to understand where the buying and selling areas are on the charts because you don't want to be buying inside a selling area and you don't want to be selling inside a buying area. Okay, so take a look here, Euro, US dollar. They're, they've been adding to their longs, 208, 228, 230, 237. Why? Because they were preparing to push price up, okay? Where were they pushing price up from? An institutional buying area. You see how we had that mapped up? That's right. We had that mapped up. And look what's being contacted right now. That's right. An institutional selling area. Now, if we look at the um, sentiment from the retail traders, they are mostly short. Why? Because they get in short when price has already made its move to the downside. And when price has already made its move to the downside, that's usually when the institutions will say, hey, it's time to shake out all these retail traders who are getting in on our overall move. So let's shake them out. So they'll lure them in short when it's pretty evident that previous lows have been taken out. Okay, these are all the tactics that they use uh, because of what is taught in your average trading book. Okay, your average trading education is telling you when previous lows are broken through, you short. When when uh, uh, areas of, of support are taken out, you short. Well, the banks know this, so they wait for you to fall for those traps, and then they come in and they reverse the market. Okay? So, once again, this is how the game is played, and we are breaking it down for you here. Pound. Look at Pound. Uh, shorts, right? 110, 107, 109, 105, 106. What do you what do you think that they are doing right here? Taking profits on short positions, just like the Aussie, Aussie US dollar. You see how they were taking profits on short positions, and look what happened, right? You see how price managed to rally up because of shorts being closed off. Profit taking, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. This is what they were doing. Profit taking on their positions. Very, very nice. And so price now rallies up, right? And as it rallies up, what are uh, most of the uh, uh, retail traders? They're actually long. They're actually long, but they've been long from here and here and here, okay? As price was dropping, okay? They've been going in long. So they were doing the exact opposite of what they should be doing. But it looks like the majority of them are still holding onto those long positions. So let's pray for them. Hopefully... Uh, uh, they'll close out some of those positions without taking a loss. Uh, U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, uh, contacted supply. 
Again, this zone has been drawn out on our charts for a long time because we located this selling area on the charts and we knew when price came up to it, it was likely going to reverse from there. And so again, you know, you look at the long positions and we can see that they went from uh, 121, 114, 116 profit taking, okay? From the highs of the 120s. They're not really focused on shorts, although they have been adding them, okay? If you take a look, 11,000, 12,000, 16,000, of course, taking advantage of that move to the downside, right? But overall, long exposure is 88% of, the, of their portfolio uh, or their exposure to the US dollar Japanese yen. And that position is still very positive at this time. And you also should notice that the dollar, US CAD, US Swiss has dropped a lot quicker than the US dollar Japanese yen, which tells me there's some resistance there with the uh, Japanese yen. So that's something that you should be aware of. Okay, let's take a look at the Kiwi. Uh, Kiwi hit our monthly target to the pip. Look at that. Look at that monthly target to the pip. Okay, and then reversed. Look at that. You see that? That target's been there for a long time. We said price is likely going to drop, hit our target right there. And why was that our target? That target was located because we knew that there was likely going to be the area where the institutions were going to take profits on their short positions. And so why do you think price is rallying up like that? Again, taking profits on short positions, right? And look, now we see the proof of it. You see? We had this mapped out at the beginning, this target at the beginning of 2022. We knew that this is where the institutions were going to take profits in 2022. So we went through January, February, March, April, May. And now we see the proof of exactly what we knew to be true. At the beginning of 2022, that's pretty impressive, I would say. Well, that just goes to show the value of what we teach here at the school and when you know what to watch for you know what is about to take place uh, retail traders you know they're about 50 50 they don't know what to do they're completely lost but you know nothing new there all right s p 500 this one's a cool one you remember uh last week we were talking about how institutional demand was coming into play and take a look. Now we see the push to the upside. If we look at the data, not much to go on here, except for the fact that they increased their short positions from 57 to 60. Long positions still remain the same. At NASDAQ, we got an increase in longs from 13 to 15. We got the push up, but we also got an increase in shorts from 10 to 12,000. Uh, looking at the overall exposure, 55% of their overall expo well, exposure is geared to the long side. Net positions are a positive 2.745, the Dow, okay? Here's the specific spot in last week's video where we said price was going to head higher. The only thing that we got right now that we should be paying attention to is the fact that we have an institutional buying area that's coming into play. And now you can see a little bit more of a, a move to the upside that is taking place. And as you can see, that's exactly what took place. Look at that big, big push to the upside. Why? Because institutional buying area came into play right here. Institutional buying area. Okay. Looking at long positions, they increased them from uh, 6,618 to 7,276 to 7,678. But one thing I will point out is look what's happening with shorts okay let me point out something to you here because as the wall street journal is posting all these things you know they're posting in their newspaper things like the s p 500 surge 2.5 on friday notching its best week of the year that sounds so positive doesn't it and snapping a punishing losing streak that had almost ended its bull market really almost ended its bull market what we're seeing is the bull market is over bull market is over the nasdaq and dow gained 3.3 percent and 1.8 respectively don't they work so hard on making it sound so positive for the market another clip markets rally to snap losing streak there is no snapping of a losing streak 
this is bad. What's going on here is really, really bad. Okay. They also had another uh, headline on, uh, I believe, MSNBC and or CNBC. Uh, the Fed's favorite inflation measure rose 4.9% in April in a sign that price increases could be slowing. Yeah. And this is coming all at, at a time when the market is breaking its, its upward trend and creating a downward trend. Okay. They're creating a downward trend. So I want you to focus here because over the next few weeks, we're going to show you something. Something really, really important, something very eye opening. OK, but I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to show you. So as these headlines are coming out, look what's happening here. OK, we have um, price contacting a institutional buying area. OK, right here. Let's go back and show you. Price is contacting an institutional buying area, and we see that uh, long positions went from 6.6, 7.2, 7.6, and that's what's helping to facilitate the move to the upside. But the column, what color is the long column? It's blue. That means their long positions are cooled off. As price is rallying up, what are they doing with their short positions? 16,000, 18,000, 19,000, 19 19.7 thousand. They are increasing their short positions. What are they? Look at net positions. Seven, minus seven, minus 10, minus nine, minus 11, minus 11, minus 12. You see how they're increasing their overall shorts? Okay. They're increasing their overall exposure to the downside. They're building a big short position as the headlines are telling you that they're snapping through the downward bearishness. OK, as the markets tiptoed into bearishness and now regaining its its bullishness. All right. Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Yeah. Pay attention. OK, in the coming weeks, we're going to unfold this whole mystery and show you something quite eye opening and jaw dropping. All right, ladies and gents. So that is pretty much it. Uh, thank you for joining me for another week. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. I really Appreciate the support and love you gave me last week on the last week video. And uh, so hit the notification bell and all that jazz. Thanks uh, for joining me again for another day. If you want more information on how we do this analysis and you want to learn what it is we're doing and you want extended information, extended analysis provided to you, you can find out the details at www.whiteoakfx.com. Thanks and have a great week. Take care.